Hello and welcome to Thursday Zoom. I think we're having a little bit of a technical issue with Chase here, but that's okay. We're going to go ahead and get started. Um, so today we're going to be going through chapter six, medical terminology. And uh, I know that we're going very fast through these chapters, but that happens sometimes. I'm very excited to get through this module uh, because after this module, we have some coding coming up and that's my favorite part. So let's see if Chase is going to come on and we can hear him. I can hear you now, Chase. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I can hear you. I absolutely. I couldn't, I couldn't even hear you on the computer. Hmm. Lord have mercy. I'm going to have to get them to look at this computer so I'll fix my audio. All right. We're going to do this. Get my beautiful face on here. Rotate. Camera. There we go. Well, you're my one and only today, but that's all right. Hey, look, I missed I missed one, and then I missed the NCC team prep. I had to go back and watch, so I'm gonna be. I gotta be here when I can be here. That's right. That's right. Uh, so you haven't gotten a chance to watch what we did on Tuesday. I have started. Um, I had to go out and get me a new notebook so I can write all my notes, but um. Um, I have the packet. I've been going through the packet. Okay, that, so, that's um, most important. Um, so next week we're going to go through, let's see, I have it written down somewhere. I think it's like 26 through 75. It's the next 50. Um, and I have everybody uh, kind of going through those so that we can go over them next week when we meet at two on next Tuesday. So, gotcha. but again, if you can't make it, then, you know, the recordings are going to be up. So. I am. We are starting on chapter six. I was just saying we're going through these chapters pretty quickly. Um, chapter six is going to be no exception. There's lots and lots of information. I just want you guys to understand that you do not have to know all the information. So medical terminology and anatomy, this is just a snippet. When we start coding in the next couple of modules, we're going to be doing lots of anatomy and lots of medical terminology. So I'm just kind of introducing it. So uh, I am going to share my screen so that we can get started. It's not going to be long, Chase. It's going to be fairly uh, quick and uh, painless. So chapter six, medical terminology. So I actually took these terms straight out of your textbook. Like uh, the, uh, the combining form auto means ear. Cardi or cardio is heart. Off the mouth. <laughs> it's ophthalmology. That's the eye. Nephro is the kidney. Neuro is the nerves. And hepat is the liver. So I know I'm just reading through these, but that's the only way that we're going to start getting to know them. You guys need to memorize them. They are going to be on the test. Maybe not all of them, but some of them. So let's talk about uh, suffixes. Algia is pain or algia. Have you heard of fibromyalgia? Yes. So, algia means pain. T O M Y, Tommy or ectomy is an incision. Scope is an instrument to view. So, you guys know when you have a scope and they go, an endoscope and they go down, a scope is just an instrument used to view. Ology or logy is the study of, like radiology is the study of what? Um, it's the, um, when they take a map of your brain and stuff, it's the, uh, it's like the x-rays and the MRIs and that thank kind you, of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> pathology is going to be like labs and blood work and things like that. Mm -hmm. So plasty is surgical repair. So if you think of a rhino, rhinoplasty, that's the surgical repair of your nose and itis. Itis, itis, itis. Going to need to know itis because there's lots of itises in the world. Itis simply means inflammation. Okay. So here's some little things to help us remember because I'm a visual girl. So auto is ear. <laughs> Cardio is the heart. Nephro is the kidney. Ophthalmol is the eye and hepat is the liver. 
sometimes I get mixed up and I want to say that that's the blood, but it's the liver. And then, of course, neuro is nerves. So some of these are going to be easy to remember. Some of them you may have to study a little bit. But here's a cute little visual. You guys know I love the cute stuff. So I love the eyeballs. So let's do it without any information. So what does auto mean? The ear. Okay. Cardio. Heart. Nephro. Uh, kidney. Hepat. Liver. Liver, yes, liver. And the optimal. I. I and neuro is. Uh, nerves. The nerves. So again, not a whole lot of them, right? But right. it's just getting us started. So we're going to look at uh, some suffixes, and we've already gone over these, but like, for example, ophthalmology, that's how ophthalmology and optimal would go together, ophthalmology, that's the study of the eyes, right? Mm -hmm. Then plasty, there's rhinoplasty, algea, my means muscle, so my myalgia, which is going to be pain in your muscles. Mm-hmm. Arthur means a joint, your joints. So, so arthritis Arth would be inflammation in your joint. Inflammation in your joint. So you see how, if you know what half the word means, you're halfway there. So right. it really just is going to make you feel so much more comfortable when we start coding and we start reading those medical terms. You may not know what it means, but you may know what a portion of it means. So Tommy or ectomy, hysterectomy, we are all have heard that before uh scope gastroscope the gastra is the stomach so mm -hmm. the gastroscope is they're going to look into your stomach all right this is one that uh was not on the list but it's going to be in a little this is a, a certification prep little test that we're going to do next but ptosis p-t-o-s-i-s -S, means prolapse drooping or sagging and that's usually something that occurs with your eyelids i had to look it up that's the reason i know because <laughs> i didn't remember mm -hmm. so now we're going to do a little quiz now if you guys are wondering where i got these questions it's in your workbook under certification preparation so let's do number one what does Ptosis mean P T O S I S. Abnormal condition of softening, abnormal condition of hardening, prolapse, drooping, and sagging, or enlargement. We just talked about it. C prolapse, drooping, and sagging. And remember, we talked about that that generally happens in your eyelids. So. Yes. All right. So we haven't gone over this, but we're going to reason these out. Okay. So what is the prefix that means between? Enter, intra, peri, or pre? Pre is before, so it's not going to be that one. Intra might can be between, because intra was like um, inside, I guess. I always think of intramediate. Intra R A mediate. So I think the answer is B. Are you writing your answers down, Chase? Because I didn't write my first name down. Number one was <laughs> C. Number two, I'm gonna say B. I have not gone over these. So because uh yeah, I think that intra, because when you think of intramediate, yeah, that's in the middle or between. What do you think? Yeah, that's what I was going with. There's a okay. B. So we're going to try B on that one. So, all right. So what is the prefix that means above or upon? Oh. So, endo, hypo, sub, or epi? When I hear epi, I'm thinking epi pen. And that's something you would use on the outside on top of 
but hypo, I think of hypoallergenic or something that also is on, on the outside. So B or D is probably my go-to here. I don't think it's endo, but. I'm going to say B too. I'm not sure. Look, I told you I, I haven't done these. <laughs> So I'm ch I'm guessing B. I'm doing them with you guys so we can see how many we get right at the end. So what are two prefixes that mean within? Endo or intra? Remember we decided that intra meant within. Uh, what did we say intra meant? Between. Intra Which, means between. If intra means between, then it also means, means within, within, right? I Which would think so. Endo would not be the answer to number three. There you go. That's our reasoning right there, Chase. I love it. So I'm going to go with A. What do you think? I think I'm going with A too. And I think we should go back and fix number three. <laughs> what do we put for number three? I put B for number three. Hypo. Oh, hypo. Okay. 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 Hypo. Then that's not wrong. Hypo. It may be wrong. I don't know. We're going to see at the end. Okay. Number Hopefully five. Not. What is the structural organization of the body from the simplest to the most complex? Okay, so organism. Oh. I think cell has got to go first. Uh, yes. So that, that knocks A out because I think cells are going to be the simplest. So cells, organs, tissue. See, I don't agree with that because organs is going to be up there. It's not simple. Well, tissue is basically also kind of. Hmm. Yeah, but based on organs or tissue, though, which do you think would be the lowest on the totem pole there? Uh, I think, probably tissue. Yeah, so that so tissue only has like a single function where organs have, have more than one function. Yeah, multiple functions. Okay, so that knocks so, D out. So, so C says t cells and tissue, organs, body system, and organism. I think I would go with C because I think body system should come after organs. I, if, I'm going to agree with you. I'm going to go with C. Okay, number six. Which body system produces hormones that circulate in the blood to target tissues that st stimulate a particular action? Cardiovascular, endocrine, blood, or integumentary? Well, blood's so, the vehicle for the hormones to travel through, I guess. Right, but what's the system? cardiovascular would be the system it's pumping but i don't think the, the cardiovascular mm -hmm. um creates the hormones so i'd probably go with b or d but i'm not 100 percent sure on either okay. one of them but integumentary is really our skin okay then no so probably I, would, b. I would say b the endocrine system all right Number seven, which body system includes joints, tendons, ligaments, and cartilage? Integumentary, what? nervous, reproductive, or musculoskeletal? Musculoskeletal. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I agree. I think we got that one right, Chase, for sure. That was a pretty easy one to get right. Okay, so now we're going to talk about body planes. And again, we just have to think about it. Which body plane divides the body into the front and the back portion? Frontal, median, metasagittal, or transverse? At screaming B right now, because median says middle to me. Median. I'm going to say frontal. You you keep yours. I'm going to keep mine. And well, wouldn't see. the frontal plane be the front portion of the body? Yeah, but when you're talking about the plane, 
look, I got my book right here. I'm gonna look. <laughs> I'm looking. I'm gonna look, y'all. Any other time I'd be able to go right to it, huh? Mm hmm So now I'm just hunting around like a crazy person. Why can't I see where it's at? Okay. Where is it? When y'all start looking at all the... Uh, prefixes and suffixes that are in your book please don't lose your mind <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of them we're not going to get to all of them but we're going to get to a lot of them okay uh but it, they're not all going to be in this chapter so i don't want you guys to worry okay oh here we go body planes let's see so the frontal plane I'm looking at the picture, Chase, and I still think it's frontal. There's only three parts of the body, right? Right. The front and Normal, the back portions. Sagittal and transverse. Right. It's definitely not transverse. Sagittal goes vertical this way. So it separates the sides. Like it separates the left from the right side. Yeah, sagittal is left and right. It looks like chrono is actually front and back if the picture that I'm looking at looks right. And transversal is up and down. Well, my but, part, this transversal is side to side. I'm going with A. We're not going to spend any more time on it. I'm going with A, frontal. All right. <laughs> We'll, we'll see if we're right or not. Okay, so blank pertains to the middle and blank pertains to the side. Blank pertains to the middle. D. Did you say B or D? D as in dog. Okay. Anterior, superior, it's lateral, and then medial. medial. So I think medial, medial would be middle. middle, right? Okay. And the lateral would be side. Okay. So are we ready to get to our answers? Yes. Oh, oh no, we wait. got number 10. Oh, we got to do number 10. How did I get off a number? Uh, anyway, which body cat, which cavity is part of the ventral body cavity and contains the heart and the lungs? Spinal. Thoracic. You're not even let me read. My bad. Spinal, ca spinal cavity, thoracic cavity, abdominal pelvic cavity, or cranial cavity. So if we just start thinking, spinal is the spine, ab the abdomen is the abdomen, cranial is your head. So yeah. just by process <laughs> of elimination, it needs to be thoracic, right? Right. <laughs> All right. Okay, let's see if we got them right. So. Hey. C. Oh, we got number two wrong. Number two was A. Three wrong. Ooh, we bad. We're going to have to go back and look. Four, Four is right. A. Five is C. Five. Six, Six is B. Is Seven is D. Good. Eight is A. You're right. Ten is D. Yes. I mean, nine is D. Ten is B. Right. Okay, let's go back and look at two and three, Chase. Let's see what we did wrong. Okay, what is the prefix that means between? A. If we got B and they say A, enter. I mean. Okay, I would say an intramediate. Is it intermediate? Intermediate? Yes, I was saying it wrong. Oh. So intermediate is it's A. Well, show. Okay. That's All okay. right. What is the prefix that means above, upon? Epi. Epi. Okay. Epidural. Ep epidural. Uh, epi Epi. Epidemus. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, 
going above and beyond and overthinking things, huh? Hey, that just goes to show you that I might have the answer key, but I don't always have the right answers when we're answering them, right? Mm -hmm. That was fun. So we're just going to do a very quick anatomy review. I did not go into putting up a video on the body systems and all of that, because again, after this module, we're going to be going into coding and we're going to cover every body system. Like you're going to get sick of body systems. So I'm not going to focus too much on that. So we're going to talk about quadrants though. Uh, quadrants are going to be important when we code. You're going to see something uh, sometimes on the medical records that I say R-U-Q, which stands for upper, right upper quadrant. Then you have the L-U-Q, the left upper quadrant. And then, of course, the lower le uh, lower right and the lower left. Uh, you're going to see these R-U-Qs and L-U-Qs in coding. So these mm -hmm. are what the quadrants mean. I mean, they're pretty explanatory, but came straight out of your book. Just wanted to kind of go over that. Okay, and this came out of your book, too. These are important symbols to know. So this little symbol here means male. That means female. The arrow up stands for increased. The arrow down stands for decreased. Plus stands for present. Minus stands for absent. Mm -hmm. Not too hard, right? Just remember the male and the female. Those are very, very important. Um, not so much for anything except for when you're working in a medical facility. Um, you'll sometimes see these symbols. So, yeah, that is pretty much the chapter. Now, when you guys get in and you start reading, I did not near go over the amount of medical terms that are there. Remember, I've already said this. Just focus on the ones that I just gave you. We're going to get to lots of other ones eventually, but we don't have time in two days to go through all of them. All right. Do you guys have any questions about the module? How are you feeling about it so far? Well, since I didn't text you about it yesterday when I was doing our my daily, mm -hmm. you gave a page number. I was like, why would you give a page number? We should go and look for that. Let me tell you the problem I had trying to find that daggum page. I don't know if it was because I leave my book open and I and I sleep my computer or what, but for some reason in chapter three, no, four, one of the two, I was on a different chapter with the page numbers that you had suggested, and I was like, there's nothing in here. All it says is Gina, We're talking about the law, like, you know, you know genetics. I was like, there's, what? So I went and said, I was like, it's not even the right page, and then I'm I couldn't find the page again that was wrong, and I found the right page. I was like, delete. <laughs> <laughs> so was it the right page after all? Yes. I don't just usually check them in my paper book. I usually go into the ebook and double check too. Listen, you yeah. would have been in big trouble, mister, if you would have texted me and said, you got the wrong page number, because then I would have had to come right back out here. Because I would have thought, well, yep, try to figure out what I did wrong. <laughs> No, I just put it in a comment. I was like, the page number is incorrect. But then I, I went to go actually look for the question. I was like, why am I on page 72? Because I closed out of the book mm -hmm. and read the logged back into the book. And I was like, why am I on page 72? So I went and I went to the right page. I was like, I am either dyslexic or wasn't reading properly, but I found the right question and everything was good. Yeah. So I deleted my comment. Yeah. Well, I don't I don't always put the page numbers, but you know, I, I don't know. Sometimes I'll get a wild hair and put the page number. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, page number? We ain't gonna find this. These dailies are really, really easy. And then I was like, then I had the hardest time trying to find it. I was like, I should just get my mouth shut. <laughs> well, if you need me to give you harder dailies, I can certainly make that happen. No. But I'm gonna let the everybody call you. Right. Yeah, <laughs> put my number. This is Alpex Chase. Yeah, I did do some different things. Like I did uh, post some like uh, key terms and things uh, in dailies because, you know, sometimes I just don't have enough room to put everything. But key terms are so important. You know, words like beneficiary and things like that. We really have to know all those things. Yeah, the day seven lab that we did last night, 
Mm -hmm. um, I liked that lab more. It was more to do. So I had to do more. Um, I do, I do it longer because I didn't have to just submit uh, group C out of A, B, C, and D. Um, and I liked it because you actually had to go find it and look up the definitions. Like, the four, I don't know if they call them, but the four tenets that you're supposed to follow, like the um, the justice, the do no harm, mm -hmm. which I think is benef 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 benevolent benevolence. I don't. Yeah, know. but it's not benevolence. It's it's like the opposite of malfeasance. It's benefeasance or be benefeasance. Oh, yeah, those things escape me. <laughs> it makes and you're eyes like, <laughs> yeah. Eyes crossed. Um, well, what I what those I'm looking at day seven now because you know I'm already working in module 152, so I don't remember what I put there until I go back and look. But yeah, yeah. I, what I'm doing is I'm copying straight out of your uh, you guys' workbook. Right, I'm um, putting in there for us to do. Right, and uh, putting them here for you to do because here's why: my workbook has like 1,500 pages in it. It has chapters that I don't even know. It, it, I don't I have no clue. I asked for them to send me a new workbook and they sent me a new textbook and said, so I said, you know what? We're just going to work around this. We're going to be flexible, right? We got to be problem solvers. So now I just copy and paste what I want you to do. And it doesn't take I swear, you time. I swear the workbook is not just for the book we're currently in though. Because when you, when you told us where chapter 22 is and you were like, this is, we're going, we're coming here just for chapter 22. And then you go into the other one. Well, the workbook has a lot more things in it than just that booklet. Cause chapter 22 is like, honestly, like chapter 40 technically in the workbook versus, but it, it was labeled properly. So as long as you are making sure you are looking at the title where it says chapter 22, then you can align them up properly. But I have a feeling that workbook is actually a workbook for like two or three of our books instead. <laughs> and you're muted. <laughs> Look, I hit my thingy. <laughs> um, it's actually uh, goes to the uh, medical assistant uh, curriculum. And for some reason, when they put together our packets, they put that workbook in instead of just the kin's manual workbook and so that's the reason why instead of trying to weed through a thousand chapters to find what chapter that's why i just copy and paste it in and it's just easier for everybody that way i have yeah. no headaches that way neither do you miss wanda how are you how are you doing miss marcia i'm doing good i'm doing good all right. Well, if you guys don't have any more questions, it's it's a quick, easy one, right? Quick and easy. Uh, painless. Yeah, painless. All, the work, all the work is easy. It really is like this. this these chapters is like giving me a request to even though I finish medical assistance with Lucia. It's mm -hmm. like refreshing. So you're not having any issues, right, Miss Wanda? Nope. All my, all my assignments comes in. I finished my testing last night. Everything is done. I, I know I, I don't have a complaint in the world at all <laughs> at all um, I am excited to move into 152 because we're going to be working on our ICD-10 we're going to okay. get to code gross stuff oh yay I love gross stuff and I think we're going to be in that class from the end of this one all the way to October yeah, uh, module 152, which is our next module, will start on 831, and it will go all the way to, hang on, let me find it. I've been working in it, so I can tell you the exact. I, the I think that sounds right, Miss Wanda. Let me see. Uh, actually, October, yeah, October the 12th. Yep. So that is, uh, so we'll be in there for a minute. This will be our longest uh, module together, I think, so far. So anyway, all right. Well, I'm letting y'all off of here to get on with your day. Thank you so much for coming to Zoom. You know, one of my favorite places to be. Let me know if you need anything, guys. Have a great day. You too.